You're watching the Intel Network and Edge vSummit series with our focus today on the visual cloud. Content delivery networks have transformed from simple web caching to the delivery of rich visual experiences optimized from the core to the edge. And joining me now to discuss how CenturyLink has evolved its CDN offerings are Bill Wunotka, Vice President Global Internet and Content Delivery Services at CenturyLink and Nihal Mehta, who is CDN Segment Manager, Visual Infrastructure Division at Intel. Gentlemen, very good to see you both. Thanks, Guy. Bill, before we delve into the details, can you give us an overview of CenturyLink's CDN? Well, our content delivery network spans over 120 uh, markets globally and pro uh, provides over 120 terabits per second of uh, egress connectivity for our customers. Our customers are generally media and entertainment companies who are looking to deliver rich media and video experiences and increasingly uh, adding features there for monetization and adding features for uh, improvement of user engagement. And then um, the online gaming industry and game publishers use our network extensively to distribute very, very highly popular games. Uh, all across the world. And Bill, what are some of the key challenges and trends you're seeing now in CDNs? Well, you know, for the last 15 years, we've continued on the trend of seeing uh, traffic that's increasing uh, every year and then a, a continual price compression and you know, price pressure downward. We're in one of the most uh, competitive uh, markets for for Edge Cloud and, and uh, really one of the fastest growing markets for Edge Cloud. So the uh, ability to get more throughput out of our uh, same capital infrastructure every year is a continual uh, pressure uh, for us to, to contend with. Nihal, this is very much the uh, you know need to do more with less in a way. Yeah, certainly. I think the, the network types are becoming bigger and fatter. So the transition to 100 gig and 200 gig is just a follow on to the, the growing network pipe. And the shift to 100 gig, you know, that is increased pressure to ensure that the nodes are being able to fully optimize the available 100 gig bandwidth. And for that reason, you know, the CDN vendors that have to leverage the NVMe SSDs so that they can then saturate the network pipe. And you know you typically need about 10 to 12 of those SSD drives to be able to fully saturate the pipe. And this is where ensuring that the hardware platform is fully NUMA balanced and your SSDs are evenly distributed across the two socket becomes extremely critical. And Bill, is this uh, transition purely because of volume? No, that's a great question. I, I really think what we're starting to see now is uh, a need to deliver more capability at the edge for our customers. So throughput was, you know, the traditional uh, high bar challenge that we were chasing and having, you know, access to Intel architects and in Intel product managers enabled us to really look forward in the future and focus on the throughput problems. But now what we're seeing is a need to differentiate at the edge. And so our our customers are coming to us uh, with applications that don't necessarily fit traditional CDN where they need more computing, more processing, and they're doing more dynamic transactions in the edge. So that has caused us to uh, launch a couple of new products in this segment. One of them uh, that we're bringing to the market now, which really enables innovation for some of our top customers, is a bare metal as a service offering that takes advantage of the large egress uh, and eyeball connectivity that we're delivering through those 120 pops globally. And Nihal, can you uh, uh, maybe explain a little bit more uh, about some of the technology behind this need to optimize on both hardware and software, you know, things such as, you know, balancing your SSDs with your NICs, for instance? Yeah, sure. So with shift to 100 gig, you know, one of the challenges that to be able to saturate the 100 gig pipe that's available per node, you can no longer do that using spinning drives. So then you have to move over to using NVMe SSDs. And given the, the current bandwidth of NVMe SSDs, you typically need about 10 to 12 of them per node. Now, when you're talking about 12 SSDs and a couple of NICs, it becomes extremely critical to balance off those devices across the two socket. So this is where the NUMA guidelines becomes extremely critical. And then on top of it, uh, you also need to optimize your software so that it's able to leverage what the hardware has to offer. Bill, can I ask you about um, some of the content we're, we're seeing? Um, because, you know, we're seeing a lot of encrypted content on the web these days. Is, is this a, a trend that's um, increasingly prevalent with video? 
Yeah, this has become uh, pretty much the standard way that uh, content customers want to deliver their video. Um, this is a consistent with you know an overall trend towards using SSL and TLS level connections to uh, uh, improve the uh, privacy of, 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 of users, uh, you know, users' behaviors on, on the internet. So it's fairly common and expected of uh, us now that we will support that in about 70 to 80 percent of the workloads that we see. Now, Bill, how, how is it that CDNs have evolved so rapidly to becoming, you know, the dominant use case on the edge? You know, I think that there's been a tremendous amount of uh, adoption in the video industry of OTT products. We're certainly seeing, you know, an unprecedented launch of new products from uh, fairly significant uh, operators in the space. Obviously, HT, AT&T's HBO Max launch is coming up uh, tomorrow. Uh, we saw Peacock launch uh, their services in, in April to a limited audience and now expanding that in July. And, of course, um, you know, the Disney Plus uh, launch in North America and Australia and now more broadly into Europe has been an unprecedented uh, uh, kind of event where you know the direct consumer um, popularity of these packages is really is really picking up. Uh, very very rapid adoption by users. Uh, in addition to that, we're seeing trends in the gaming industry that have uh, I think accentuated or exacerbated the uh, you know the shelter in place usage and consumption we're seeing of the internet. So in particular free-to-play and free-to-all games uh, for triple-a titles that were sort of franchise uh, pay-to-play uh, games for many years now we're watching you know the um, the value proposition expand so that all players can play for free and monetization is going to be happening in games differently and this has driven a tremendous peak concurrent uh, uh, rushed for everyone to sort of get the games and start playing with their friends as quickly as they can uh, the value proposition of giving something away for free uh, starts to fall apart if you have to wait uh, you know, beyond the time when your friends have downloaded it. So we've been working very closely with the gaming industry to help them develop uh, peak, peak traffic controls and ways to reduce the impact of these, uh, of these new products on the performance of the internet, in particular during uh, business hours where commerce and uh, Zoom meetings are happening and during uh, prime time when you know, families are uh, watching those VOD packages they just purchased and now increasingly starting to watch live sports again, which is, is really exciting to see that return as well. Now you spoke about um, people playing games um, together and simultaneously. What about watching simultaneously? Um, are, are we seeing a move towards those, those new personalized experiences where you're, you're simultaneously watching, uh, say, a, a live sports event? Well, that is where we're seeing the innovation really start to occur. Uh, live sports uh, video services where uh, two of us have an experience at separate times, uh, well, but we're sharing the experience on a Zoom. That's going to be pretty unfulfilling for most of us. So app synchronization is absolutely one of the most critical features that we're seeing our customers focus on now. And that has necessitated, in some cases, the need for us to deploy you know, more general purpose edge compute infrastructure where we would normally deploy our, deploy our CDN nodes so that customers can use uh, the advantages that proprietary technology affords them to have uh, you know, better user experience. I think this becomes particularly, particularly important as it does appear that we'll be watching our live sporting events from home, uh, but potentially trying to share those experiences across um, you know, our, our Zoom and, and Microsoft Teams uh, uh, platforms. And Nihal, how is Intel helping in, in situations like this? Yeah, at Intel, we, we are continuously looking for opportunities to help save costs for our customers. So to this point, you know, with growth in live streaming, this is where you know, we have a new ingredient, which is the Intel Optane Premium Solution, which is essentially a replacement to DRAM. This helps our customers to reduce cost and deliver more and more channels. So depending on the configuration, you know, they can deliver up to 75% more channels using the same hardware. So why don't we look ahead now um, and let's talk about some of the upcoming challenges and I guess also opportunities that are there on the horizon. Bill, what are you seeing? The challenges for us have always been eradicating the poor experiences that you know less than one percent of internet streaming users have and to that end uh, the telemetry that we're needing to deliver and the nature of that being real time so that it is something that we can provide a layer of automation over these are really where the challenges are in in the cdn space and i think in the edge computing space as well the the velocity of data that's required and the decision making time frames are going to require us to have uh, faster and better data pipelines continuously. Um, so, you know, our goal is to just continue to ensure that the 1% of 
users out there that are having a bad experience that that number continues to go down and that we're able to find the needle in the haystack as it relates to enabling our media customers and our game distributing customers to uh, uh, ensure that they're delivering you know, the best possible user experience uh, everywhere around the globe. And Niho, how important is it that you work with your customers and your partners in the ecosystem to, to define the solutions that are needed to uh, meet these upcoming challenges? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, one of the points to remember is that you know most OTT players today deploy multi-CDN strategy, and therefore any downtime or lower cache ratio is going to cost the CDN providers uh, money big time. So when talking about thousands of nodes across hundreds of edge locations, you have to literally come through petabytes of data that is coming in from each of the nodes. So this is the opportunity where you know we can apply uh, newer technologies such as machine learning and AI to to help the CDN providers to dynamically detect uh, faults in the system, as well as do better with their log management capability. And Bill, um, we've spoken about the rapid pace of innovation that we're seeing in the industry at the moment. You know, how is how is the change in software? I mean, are we seeing more focus on um, IP workflows in the media sector? Are we looking at um, taking some of these proprietary transmission protocols and making them more mainstream and, and prime time? You know, it's it's really kind of a, a, a time of exploration. The move towards uh, remote production and at home production. You know, began many years ago, uh, but now we're seeing a requirement to reduce the number of people that are actually present within, um, you know, a production uh, workflow, especially for live sports. Um, so as we've continued to push on deploying our edge compute solutions uh, and, uh, you know, also using an all IP workflow, we've, we've just, I think, accelerated into a period of uh, really kind of rapid innovation because uh, the situation demands it. We've got to reduce the number of people that are exposed in large public uh, uh, places. And uh, I think the timing of um, you know, the edge becoming much deeper and much stronger is, is just right. So uh, I think that we're going to continue to see uh, proprietary use cases, innovation, and then an even more rapid adoption of at-home production and remote production capabilities. Uh, in the meantime, we're also going to see an increasing uh, interest and the um, metadata that's provided by the entertainment companies from you know, the event venues. So there'll continue to be uh, innovation around how do we give the user a more immersive experience at home and give them you know, more of a flavor for being in the venue or perhaps even uh, more experiences than they could uh, actually uh, really experience you know, as, a, as a live participant of the sport. So we do expect that metadata will take on an even more important role, in particular metadata about how the individual performers are performing and metadata regarding um, uh, probably you know, the likelihood of the next play occurring in some specific outcome. And this is really a precursor to uh, you know, more, more broad adoption of, of gaming and uh, gambling platforms around live entertainment. So we've got this really strong vision of how we want to move things forward. Does this underline the need to have close collaboration with your key partners? Our collaboration with Intel has been consistent throughout you know, our history. Uh, again, being able to lean in and look towards what the roadmap is going to bring and ensure that they're understanding what our, uh, our hardware requirements are based on our customers' business requirements has just been a critical, critical uh, component of us remaining successful in the space over the last 15 years. So, Bill, are there any specific Intel technologies that you're using now in the CDN? Well, you know, memory has been really our biggest challenge. Our customers' uh, libraries and the complexity of their video libraries continues to grow, um, and it's outpacing, you know, what's possible with the current infrastructure. So we have a need for more and more memory as these libraries increase in size. Uh, we're working right now with Intel um, on the Optane PMEM solution, which we think can deliver better, uh, better results for us than uh, typical DRAM at a much lower price. Bill and Nihal, thank you both very much for joining us on the program. And don't forget, you can watch more interviews and discussions on the Visual Cloud right here as part of the Intel Network and Edge V Summit series. But for now, thank you for watching and goodbye.